Hey everyone, it's Allie and welcome to my channel. And today I have quite the video for you. I am about to turn 31 years old, so of course I had to get 31 books plus one to grow on. So just a few days after this video comes out, I am turning 31 years old. And what is better to get yourself for your birthday than a bunch of books? Now I was not intending on getting this many books because I did just pick up 30 several months ago. I had been accumulating those for a few months, but I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll just pick up like 10 to 15 books or so for my birthday, but I went on Book Outlet, my favorite place to get discounted books. Not sponsored, but it is where I get the vast majority of my books. Most of them are priced at just around $5. So before I knew it, I had ended up with 25 books from Book Outlet. I also picked up, I think about four books from Amazon that I had been wanting that I couldn't find at thrift stores or Book Outlet or whatever. And then I also did get two books from Book of the Month for October. So you guys saw the thumbnail, you know we have a lot to get through. So let's go ahead and start out with the smallest box, Book of the Month. Also, it's really hot in my house. I'm pretending like it's a chilly fall day, but I might start sweating a little bit. So it's kind of perfect how this worked out. I just celebrated getting 12 boxes from Book of the Month. And when you reach certain milestones with the company, you get bonuses. So I think once you hit maybe like four or five boxes, you get your second add-on for cheaper. And then when you hit 12 boxes, you get some goodies. And I think you get like a free book of the year and a free birthday book. I think I actually started ordering from book of the month, maybe like last July. But the great thing about the company is that you can skip some months. And clearly I haven't done that very often, but I think I did skip maybe two or three. So it worked out that it's just about a year and a few months that I celebrated the 12 boxes. But let's look at some of these goodies. One of them is this book of the month tote. And this is actually nicer than I was expecting. It's pretty thick and I like that it has this little book pocket there. And then they also sent these little reaction pins, which I guess you could put on a jacket or the tote or whatever. And then as I said, I did end up getting two books and one of them was free and it was actually not free because it's my birthday month. I don't know if that's gonna kick in next month or if they just missed that and I'm gonna have to email them. I'm not quite sure yet. But one of you guys actually used my referral link for book of the month and I was able to get a free book. So if you have not checked out the service yet, one I would highly recommend because it's just like the best subscription service you can get if you like books, I think. Again, not sponsored, but I do think it is a great service. And if you are buying for the first time, if you would use my referral link, that is a big help to me because it does get me a free book. But I am super, super excited about these books that I picked up. I was kind of debating between a couple this month, but I'm super glad I ended up going with Alex E. Haro's Starling House because once I bought this, I started seeing people talking about this everywhere. So technically this did come out a little bit early on book of the month. I think it is available everywhere now, but yeah, like technically this came out about a week early on book of the month, but this is more of a horror thriller fantasy. And the tagline is, I dream sometimes about a house I've never seen. I should be scared, but in the dream, I don't hesitate. And it says, Opal has been obsessed with the Underland since she was a child. When she gets the chance to step inside Starling House and make some extra cash for her brother's escape fund, she can't resist. So spooky house, her brother's trying to escape. It sounds like it's gonna be a really good one. And as I said, that I've heard really good reviews already. So that was the October pick, but I did get this free add-on and I was really excited to see that they had Bright Young Women available. This is one that I would have picked up from Amazon this month. I've also been hearing a lot of great things about this book and I've been very, very eager to read it. I'm definitely going to make it a priority this month. One, I just absolutely love the cover of this. I think it's super pretty, but I think this is so cool because I am a huge historical fiction lover as well as a thriller lover. And this kind of combines both of them because this story is inspired by the real life sorority targeted by America's first celebrity serial killer. It's set in January of 1978. So if you are a very, very specific mood reader, I would say I'm a mood reader, but it's more 
the vibes, but you could wait until January to read this one. So it sounds like the serial killer escapes from Aspen, Colorado, but then the serial killer gets to Florida State University and that's where some killings take place. So unfortunately, yeah, based on a true story, but I think this one is going to be so good absolutely anticipating five stars. All right, now let's move on to the Amazon books. As I said, I'm pretty sure I picked up four from here. This first one was not on my radar at all until I saw one of Darling Desi's videos. And if you don't follow her, I would highly recommend. She makes extremely cozy cinematic videos. She's always got great book recommendations too. But she did recommend this one. It's called Bubble Bubble Toil and Cuddle. And this is just a self-published book on Amazon. And I myself have a self-published book on Amazon. And I certainly recognize how hard it is to get any sort of traction at all. So I'm very happy to support this author. And Desi said that this is just the most adorable, cozy book. It's very short too, so I should definitely be able to get through this. Maybe I'll just read it like right on Halloween. And it involves an elite magical school. I love a lot of like academic kind of books. I think they're just so cozy. But there is a magical school where young witches and warlocks come to hone their craft, witchcraft that is. Evie expects this year to play out as all the others have before it. But when her mother tasks her with finding an ancient relic for the witches council, things get a whole lot more complicated, especially when she finds herself hunting for the relic with Milo, a brooding warlock she can't stand. So definitely sensing some light enemies to lovers. There'll be some romance in here, I'm sure. But I mean, you just like have to get this for the title alone. Bubble, bubble, toil, and cuddle. And it does say that it is a pumpkin spiced cauldron novella by S. Frasher. So this author might have other books kind of in the same universe. This one has been on my list forever. I was really hoping to get it like at a thrift store, but it's been out for about a year now. So it's a lot cheaper than it originally was. And this is Kate Atkinson's Shrines of Gaiety. You guys know if you've seen even a few of my other videos, I am a huge Kate Atkinson fan. She just has such a unique way of writing that I really, really love. I think she is one of the best currently alive right now. I really did want to pick this up in the hardback because I just love this cover. I think there is now a paperback version available. This was originally like $35 and I think I got this for maybe like 18 to 20 now. This book is set in London in 1926 and it sounds like it's going to kind of talk about the secret life of like the clubs at the time. So I think that's gonna be super interesting because of course a lot of books set around World War I, World War II are very much like focused on the battlefield. And I like books that are set during that time that are focusing on something a little bit different. This is one I have been hearing about a lot lately. A couple people in my life have recommended it to me and that is Once Upon a Broken Heart. This is by Stephanie Garber, who I think has written quite a bit and I don't believe I've read anything from her. Oh yes, she wrote the Caraval series. And it looks like there are two other books in this series that are currently out now. So that's kind of nice to know that if I like absolutely am obsessed with this book, I can finish the trilogy quite quickly. It says, how far would you go for happily ever after? Good start to me. Evangeline Fox has always believed in true love and happy endings until she learned that the love of her life will marry another. Desperate to stop the wedding, Evangeline strikes a deal with the charismatic immortal Prince of Hearts, but she soon discovers the bargaining with the Prince of Hearts is a dangerous game. So I do love the sound of this. Some romance, but some fantasy. I don't mind romance in my books. I am not really a romance girly. I don't like a specific romance genre, but if it is tied in with fantasy or historical fiction or just really any other genre, I do find it a lot more interesting. So I think I'm really gonna enjoy this. And then lastly, I did pick up A Court of Silver Flames. This really goes along <laughs> with the last book. A lot of romance, but a lot of fantasy too. I have only read the first two so far. I'll probably finish the series like during winter, January, February. I did buy the collection initially when only the first four were out. So I've got the first four and I figured why not just pick up the fifth one now? I think I got this for only like $9 too. And it is a thick one, my goodness. Yes, yeah, 750 pages. <laughs> I do think I'm making the right choice and just holding off on finishing until winter when it's super boring out. Okay, now all of the rest of these books are gonna be from Book Outlet. I think I paid like $150 for all of these books, all like 25 or 26. 
just has such a satisfying tear away and I can never get it in the first go. So I'm not gonna lie, I pick up a lot of books on Book Outlet just based on the vibes, based on the genre, a very short blurb, and the cover. I am a sucker for a good cover. And that is absolutely what drew me to this one. This is called Himself by Jess Kidd. Just the cutest little cover I've ever seen. It looks like it might be a good one for like November. And the tagline is, in this darkly magical tale, a young man returns to his haunted Irish hometown to learn the truth about his roots. So he was abandoned as an infant at an orphanage, and then he decides to return to the rural Irish village where he was born to learn what really happened. And it says, what begins as a personal mission becomes a quiet revolution. A young man in his town uniting against those who have kept the inhabitants of this small forgotten village under their thumbs for far too long. It's a battle for the ages, but Mahoney has the dead on his side. I love that it's set in the Irish countryside. I feel like I've read very few books in that setting, but this cover, man, it drew me in. I just have so many books I wanna read this fall. This is gonna be an issue. I mean, look at this one. This is Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson, and it says, when everyone lies, somebody dies. So this one, I think, is a young adult, and I've really been enjoying reading young adult books lately, especially young adult thrillers. And this is set at Ellingham Academy. I love when books are set like in academies and schools. So school isn't going well for Stevie Bell. Her boyfriend David is studying in London. Her friends are obsessed with college applications. So it sounds like it is revolving around this 1995 case where students were found murdered in the woodshed. And I'm just realizing that this is actually the fifth book in a series. So I'll have to look and see if these can be read on their own or I might have to get the other books in the series, but it does sound like it's gonna be really good. It looks like the first book in the series is called Truly Devious, so maybe look out for this book called Truly Devious. I'll pop it up on the screen so you can be on the lookout for it, but I'll also put up a note on the screen to let you know if you can read this on its own. Another thriller here, this is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I have been itching to read more from him, so I was so excited to see this available on Book Outlet. So it sounds like the main character, Maggie's parents, moved into this Victorian estate 25 years before the book is set. They ended up fleeing in the dead of night after just 20 days in the house and the dad wrote a book about it. The main character, Maggie, feels like she's lived her life in the shadow of this book. She ends up inheriting it. I love thrillers that are like centered around spooky houses, so this sounds so good. And it says her homecoming is anything but warm. She experiences strange occurrences straight out of the book and she starts to wonder if he wrote was more fast than fiction. This is absolutely gonna get read this October. It sounds super atmospheric, super creepy. Another gorgeous cover. This is Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. So we've got our classic main character who's just living a dreary life and then Hotel Magnifique appears in town. It's famous for its astonishing enchantments, especially its ability to travel the world, arriving at a new destination each midnight. So the two main characters jump at the chance to join the hotel staff and they're swept up in the world. There's a handsome doorman involved and the main character is on a mission to unravel the mystery of the magic at the heart of the hotel. And she's also trying to free the staff. So there must be some kind of spell on them, kind of like a genie in a bottle situation. Another gorgeous one. I think this is gonna be good for Dark Academia November. This one, you know I had to get it, The Seven Year Slip. Everybody and their mother has been talking about this book. And I do like this author, Ashley Poston. I've only read one from her, Among the Beasts and Briars. I read that last fall and I thought it was super good. Dead Romantics is like next up on my list. We've got another Down on Her Luck main character, Clementine West. She ends up moving into her late aunt's apartment and she finds a strange man standing in the kitchen, a man with kind eyes, a southern drawl, and a taste for lemon pies. The only problem is he exists in the past, seven years in the past to be exact, and she quite literally lives seven years in his future. So I forget, isn't there like a movie that's kind of similar to that, The Lake House maybe, something like that, where you find your perfect match but they are not existing like in the same universe? I hope this one isn't sad, but as I said, 
people have been giving this really good reviews. When I saw this book, I knew I had to pick it up. It seems perfect for Dark Academia November. One of the reviews on the back says, if The Hunger Games was a dark fairy tale, you'd get the vicious and enchanting light lark. Get ready to be transported into a dazzling world where love is a death sentence and the romances between competitors are even fiercer than the curses plaguing the islands. So some romance, but a lot of fantasy going on. And the inside cover says, welcome to the centennial every hundred years, the island of light lark appears for only 100 days to host a deadly game where the rulers of six realms fight to break their curses and win unparalleled power. Each ruler has something to hide, each curse is uniquely wicked. To break them and save themselves and their realms, one ruler will die. So it does sound very similar vibes to Hunger Games, and I really did enjoy those books. I have been wanting to read more middle grade stories, so I did pick up a few in this haul. This is one of them. It is North Wind by Gary Paulson. And I think we've all read different Gary Paulson books throughout maybe elementary school. Yeah, he was the one who wrote Hatchet, which I think I had to read in like fourth or fifth grade. This one sounds so atmospheric. It's set along a rugged coastline centuries ago, and it's a young person's battle to stay alive against the odds. There's a deadly plague. There's a journey through the wilderness. It just sounds like it is going to be my cup of tea. I love these kind of survival type stories. And look at the back, it's so pretty. I was so thrilled to see that book outlet had Killjoy available. This is a novella from the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder universe. And I've talked about that series a lot here on my channel. I can't really think of any other YA thrillers that I liked more. So let's just say it's my favorite YA thriller series. I was super impressed by the three books. I felt like the character development made sense. The story was good, it was engaging, five stars across the board for all three books. So I'm sure this is just gonna be a great little addition. And this sounds like it is set at Pip's friend's murder mystery party and she's playing detective, teasing out the identity of the killer. But it's not the only case on her mind. So if you did like the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, just know that this exists because I did not know it existed for a long time and it is available on Book Outlet. Here we have All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. Megan Miranda has quickly become one of my favorite authors in the thriller genre. I've read three by her so far and I really enjoyed all of them. I thought that they were all, I think at least 4.5 stars or above. And it's always nice to find an author who has like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, whatever books available so you can go back and pick them up. And every once in a while, there will be different ones from her available on Book Outlet. I think literally all the books I've gotten from her were from there. One was from Book of the Month. So it sounds like it has been 10 years since the main character's best friend disappeared, and now there is another girl that's gone missing. It says shocking truths emerge about her neighbors, her family, and what really happened to her best friend that night 10 years ago. And it's got a creepy Ferris wheel on the cover. This one I kind of bought on impulse because I do already have a copy, but it's a special edition and it was a great price. This is Little Women 150th Anniversary Illustrated Edition and it is an absolutely adorable cover. I actually wish I would have picked up maybe even a couple other copies because I think this is a really good gift for someone if you know they really like Little Women. I will say though, there's not like an excess of pictures in here. There's kind of just like little pictures at the start of a new chapter, but the book itself is absolutely beautiful. Taking this out on a picnic, like the most aesthetic thing ever. This is another middle grade book, So Fall. This is Ravenfall by Kaylin Josephson. Strange things always find their way in. It says 13 year old Annabella has never been normal even by her psychic family standards. Every generation uses their abilities to help run the Ravenfall in, a sprawling magical B&B at the crossroads of the human world and the other world, but it's hard to contribute when your only power is for seeing death. And then 14 year old Colin shows up, he's searching for his older brother, and as the two of them team up to find answers, they unearth Colin's family's secret past and discover that Colin has powers beyond his imagination. And it says if Anna and Colin can't stop the creature by Halloween night, the veil to the other world could be torn apart. So this will be a perfect one to also read this month of October. I need like a Hermione Granger time turner to read all these books that I wanna read this month and next month. I just decided to go ahead and pick up this book, Immortality, A Love Story, because at a different point from Book Outlet 2, I think I picked up the first book in this duology, Anatomy. So I probably should have waited until I read the first one, but 
when you see certain books on book outlet and you want them and they're a good price like i got all of these books while they were having a sale you just kind of have to go ahead and grab them because they don't have unlimited supplies of books a lot of them are on there for many months at a time but other ones that are popular do go quite quickly so i'm not even going to look too much into this because i don't want any spoilers for the first one but i know there's romance involved there's like some fantasy i think some horror but this is a young adult duology this is a middle grade book I think. It is Wolf Hollow by Lauren Wolk. It says, despite growing up in the shadows cast by two world wars, Annabelle has lived a mostly quiet, steady life in her small Pennsylvania town. Until the day new student Betty walks into her class. And of course, she's the classic bully, and though her bullying seems isolated at first, it quickly escalates, and she starts targeting poor Toby, who's a reclusive World War I veteran. And as tensions mount in their small community, Annabelle must find the courage to stand as a lone voice for justice. This one might be a little bit sad, but I remember I did pick this up because it was a Newbery honor book. So it'll probably be moving, sad, but pretty good. This is one that had been on my to buy list for quite a while, The Book of Lost Names, good old historical fiction. They're always facing away on historical fiction covers. I do not know why. It sounds like part of the book is focusing on the main character, Eva, who is a semi-retired librarian in Florida. And then she sees an image of a book she hasn't seen in 65 years. So probably half of the book will be set like in present-ish time and then there will be flashbacks to her as a graduate student in 1942 when she was forced to flee Paris after the arrest of her father. And in 1942, she decides she has to find a way to preserve the real names of the children who are too young to remember who they really are, and that becomes the Book of Lost Names. You know it's another historical fiction because they're facing away. We were the lucky ones. This one's set in the spring of 1939, and three generations of the Kirk family are doing their best to live normal lives even as the shadow of war grows closer. And it sounds like the members of the family are each going to be spread to their own areas, so probably multiple perspectives, and it will be following their likely very sad <laughs> journey throughout the war. So I do love these like war books, but I have to spread them out because they are usually pretty sad, but they're always so good. This one I'm so excited about, and this is another reason I love Book Outlet, is because I just find these books that I would never have like searched for on Amazon otherwise. This one is called All the Ever Afters, The Untold Story of Cinderella's Stepmother. I am a huge fan of fairy tales, and like alternative fairy tales, things like that. So I think this one is going to be so fun for me to read. So in this story, the stepmother was separated from her family when she was a kid and she was forced into servitude as a laundress's apprentice when she was just 10 years old. So kind of explaining why she might grow up to be quite cruel. I am a huge lover of an author called Kate Forsyth, who has like a PhD in fairy tales. So I think she has the best fairy tale retellings that I have found, at least for adults. This one might be actually more of a young adult book, but it sounds like it's gonna be really interesting. <gasps> okay, this is super interesting because there are more than a few books in here that I did not order. So I'm going to have to go back and check and make sure I did get everything that I got in the other stuff. I guess I'll just put in like little free libraries or something. I felt like this was too many books. So first up of ones I did not get are this book, Scythe. I'm very confident I did not get this book. So, okay, there's that. They also just put in all these classics, which I did not buy. <laughs> so we've got Emma, we've got Persuasion, we have got Frankenstein, and Jane Eyre. So I'm super confused, but honestly, I mean, if I'm not missing any books, should I just do a giveaway? Does anybody want those classics? Cause they are all from like the same company. <laughs> okay, this is just the wrong order. Oh boy. So I was confused at first. I thought this was my order because I did order this book. I'm pretty sure Matt Higgs, How to Stop Time. Um, Yeah, then we got Dracula. We got this book called Ace of Spades. We got Dr. Jekyll and Dr. Hyde. We got a random book, the sixth novel of Miss Peregrine's Peculiar Children, Pride and Prejudice, <laughs> Sense and Sensibility. Okay, so I just counted. It looks like I'm missing 
eight books. Let me at least get my laptop so I can tell you what I was supposed to get and then I will have to contact them. This is the problem of doing book unboxings on camera. If I would have opened them before, I would have known that. I'm hoping they don't give me a hard time about getting the books because I have had them for a couple of weeks, but I was waiting of course to film this video. Okay, so now it's coming back to me. Three of the books I got were from the Throne of Glass series. Throne of Glass 1, 2, and 3. I've heard great things. This is a series that has been on my radar for a while. Some of my friends say they even like it better than A Court of Thorns and Roses, and it's less romancy, which I think I will like better. So I do want those. I also got Legends and Lattes, another book that I've been hearing such great things about. I think it would be a great one to read in October. Hopefully I can get it. I did get that book, How to Stop Time. I also got another book by Riley Sager called Survive the Night, another thriller called My Lovely Wife, and it looks like that might be it. Oh, and I did get the first book in the Hazelwood series. I had opened this in a different box, but I was gonna wait until the first one came out so I could talk about them together. So I did get the second book, but the first book was in this other order. Okay, so sorry about that, guys. I will have to figure that out but just know yeah those were the books I was supposed to get and if they say like I don't need to ship these other ones back I'll do a giveaway but I'll probably have to ship them back okay so it has been a few hours right when I finished filming the main part of this video I did go ahead and send an email to book outlet and literally probably less than five minutes later five minutes tops I got an answer and they said, just go ahead and keep the books and we will send you the replacements. I think there was just one that I ordered that they no longer had in stock. So they went ahead and refunded me for that book. Probably the best customer service experience of my life. I think there are 14 books here. Like I got somebody's quite big order. So as I said, if I got to keep the books, I would do a giveaway. So I am going to be doing a giveaway of these nine classic books just one person will get this beautiful classic book collection thanks to book outlet so we've got dracula jekyll and hyde wuthering heights pride and prejudice sense and sensibility emma persuasion frankenstein and jane eyre and these are specifically from the paper mill press and they do have other paper mill press books on their website so this is a great, great start to a collection. But if you are interested in winning all of these books, definitely go ahead and check out my Instagram page. I will have a post detailing the giveaway, but really all you need to do is put a comment down. And like I said, with my last giveaway, if for some reason you do not have an Instagram, just go ahead and comment that down below and I will include you in the running. So it worked out. I wasn't gonna do a birthday giveaway because I just did a fall one, but it's my birthday giveaway. But anyway, if you did like this video, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe. It really does help my channel out quite a lot. But thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.